uh, for marine HVAC some of the ISO standards also which are commonly been used so what are those standards let's have a look at it first is ISO 7547 for living quarters on the ships or vessels so suppose we have to design the FPSO suppose you have to design the passenger ship suppose you have to design the cruise then this is very very important standard it is ISO 7547 uh, which talks about even the pressure requirement how much it should be minimum uh, as compared to the total air supply then it talks about the minimum number of air changes in the toilet in the galley or in the laundry or in smoking area recreation area uh, and it talks about uh, if at the initial stages suppose the heat, heat dissipation values are not given and it gives some indication towards the heat dissipation values also and again it, it gives a dissipation of the U value of the bulkhead and deckhead it gives an indications uh, about the reflectivity index there are a lot of things which has been covered uh, inside this standard so this is also a very very important standard ISO 7547 and it is followed by the next standard that is ISO 8861 it gives how to calculate the engine room ventilation I will be sharing you the calculation sheet format in subsequent lecture when you will understand how uh, we can calculate the engine room ventilation size of size of a fan for engine room so this uh, particular standard also plays very very important role to understand how the engine room uh, ventilation uh, calculation has to be done because when you say engine room the ship has an engine room which has a propeller alternator so ship should move forward due to thrust so there's an engine room which is normally a diesel engine uh, and the size of this engine is very very huge so for that ventilation is a must same for uh, the diesel generator also this 8861 can be used in the offshore platform then let's talk about the 8862 is for the control room how much should be the heat dissipation and how the ducting should be done that is decided in this particular standard then there is a standard 8864 for the wheelhouse this standard talks about the requirement of the air conditioning in the wheelhouse where the, mainly the captain is sitting of the ship for offshore platform there is no wheelhouse so it is only for because it is a fixed platform but for uh, the ship wheelhouse is mandatory uh, there is normally the, where the captain operates the ship by sitting there and his crew so, which is helping him they take a call then ISO 9099 is for the galley. Galley is nothing but a kitchen. This is very very important uh, chapter or very very important thing which I will be covering in subsequent lectures. Uh, for galley what happens is uh, your system uh, supply exhaust is been designed based on the heat dissipation from the galley equipment. And again they work on cycle. As you know the galley equipment doesn't, are not 24 by 7 working. So there are certain ships that is morning breakfast and uh, then there is the afternoon and there is the evening so only three in the three ships the galley is operating so when the galley is operating uh, there is a heat dissipation happening from the fryers heat dissipation is happening from the burners so all these things we need to consider while designing the galley and with that much heat dissipation uh, if not given then certain amount of value is given in the standard which we need to follow then let's talk about the dry provision store is 9943 as we have already covered it is a storage where uh, the material which is not required to be specifically at low temperature has been kept like sauce is there the condensed milk is there then the dry fruits are there these are certain things cheese uh, of, of certain uh, degree so all these things uh, dry cheese normally we call it has been kept at uh, the dry provision store. The ISO 15138 is basically more of an HVAC requirement for the offshore platform specifically. So it covers all the requirement of the safety, then temporary refuge and uh, interfaces with the other discipline, interfaces with the technical safety, interfaces with instrumentation, type of ducting, material ducting, velocity uh, to be considered, sound level to be considered. These are some of the details which are covered in ISO 15138 
which we will be looking in deep in the subsequent chapter. Now let's move on to the next chapter. Let's see what it is. Uh, this is again a very very important slide I want to talk about. This is a typical GA layout of the living quarter or where the people stay. Again I say this is a typical one. Uh, that doesn't mean that every platform or every ship has to have just such kind of a layout. Layout differs from the client to client and requirement of the client. But this is what a typically how it looks. Or these are the typical rooms. It could be more rooms also. But as I say it's a typical one. The deeper one I'm going to dive in the subsequent sessions. Being a basic one this is what the layout it looks like. If you see on the right hand side over here. This is what the cabins look like. These are all the cabins and these are the lockers. These are the beds where people come and stay. Normally there are two shifts. So one first shift morning shift happens. This person goes for the a person goes for the work. And the second person comes out after his shift finishes. So it works 24 by 7. And uh, these are if you see this is a common uh, washroom over here and common uh, lockers are there and common washrooms are there at this corner and this corner and again I am saying it has not it should not be necessarily the same one this platform is having this arrangement most of the times the uh, your uh, your um, bathrooms and washrooms are located inside the cabin itself again on this level if you see there is a mess room there is a kitchen there is a recreation room over here where gym equipment are kept there are lockers, there are smoking rooms here over here. So such kind of arrangement also, there is an electrical room. So such kind of an arrangement also is existing in some of the platforms. It, platforms can be a two level platform, three level platform, up to the five to six level platforms also are available based on the requirement and the design of the system. So now let's move on to the next slide. Next slide covers the basic images of the equipment. This is again I am going to cover it in subsequent next chapter. So again just to give the idea when I say about the images of equipment what I talk about. If you see this is a fan with a motor and motor is a bifurcated type. What I say bifurcated type is the motor is not exposed to the air stream or the exhaust which is coming from the kitchen. The reason is of course the simple, the exhaust or the airflow which is coming out of the kitchen consists of the uh, say grease or oily fumes which may get deposited over the motor body and oil being in hazardous and uh, gas uh, a fire friendly material it is not at all advisable to get deposited over the motor body. So in case of sparking happens, it could be a disaster. And as I already told earlier, the safety is the very very important factor for marine oil and gas and uh, ship shipping sector. So that's why such kind of an arrangement is happens for the galley fan where it's a bifurcated type and motor is kept outside the airstream. Such kind of details will not get anywhere in the any course which I am presenting over here. So listen it very very carefully. Bifurcated motors are used for the galley exhaust. This is what the typical hood looks like. This is what the fryer or, or, or the burners are here. And this is an exhaust capture hood over there which is made up of stainless steel. Interesting fact is that whichever equipment you are using inside the galley are mandatory has to be a stainless steel one for the obvious reasons. See, this is a mushroom cowl over here and uh, this is what is the penetration looks like. This is a fan over here and uh, the exhaust air comes out from here or even the fresh air gets sucked from here based on the requirement. Uh, if you see this is a vertical air tube with a plenum arrangement. It has been done basically where the space constraint or the room is very small such kind of arrangement is preferred. But again such kind of arrangement has the limitations on the static pressure. So it has been seen that uh, when it is uh, when we uh, when any of the AHU is being proposed like this the platform is normally a smaller duct lens 
or uh, in terms of lens. Uh, so uh, this is what due to space constraint we have to sometimes do some certain adjustment uh, to fit our equipment inside the room. Again these are the basic photos I would be covering the deeper one later on in the subsequent session. For the time being this session is just to give the ideas about the type of equipment typically used for the offshore industry. Now let's move on to the next slide. The next slide basically we are going to talk about uh, the single line diagram for marine chiller freezer room plant. Again this is a basic one so I am not going too much into the detail. But as you could see, uh, this is going to be a sea water cooled condensing unit with a compressor over here if you see. And the respective indoor units are being kept at the respective rooms. So typically if you see there are three rooms over here. There is pre-storage room, chiller room and a freezer room. When we talk about these three rooms, we need to understand that in this room, the storage of either fish, meat, fruits and vegetable do happen. Now let's take an example of pre-storage room. When any frozen container from the shore comes in, it come, comes inside, uh, it doesn't take, it doesn't need to directly go into the chiller freezer room. So some of the material has been kept in a pre-storage room at plus 17 degrees Celsius, and the freezer room is required to be kept at minus 20, minus 20 to minus 24 degrees Celsius, and freezer room is kept at a plus 2 degrees Celsius. Normally, freezer room contains the uh, vegetables and fruits and the freezer contains normally the meat and fish uh, and the calculation and the heat load values and all I would be covering in a subsequent sessions after a while. So just be focusing because this is altogether a different chapter will be there but as you could see very very carefully over here all these pipes and single line diagram I have shown and I would be explaining it later also but for time being if you see uh, what are the walls being installed you will understand the basic schematic diagram over here see there are accumulators are there, the oil separator is there then there is a LPHP switch is there then the, there are gauges are over to understand the conditions inside to analyze it and there is, if you see there is a non return wall over here all the purpose of this all the walls I will cover it in subsequent session and there is a, a, a TXV is there, there is a thermostatic expansion wall, how it operates. I am going to cover it in subsequent session. So just to give an understanding, uh, this is how it looks and this is how the arrangement it is. There is a separate room always been provided to house these units inside. So this is what all about the chiller freezer uh, plant room looks like for the marine HVC system and often the offshore systems and these are the subsequent lines that is uh, all this uh, all you can uh, call it as a suction a suction line and the liquid line and suction line and liquid line suction line is nothing liquid line is, uh, suction line is nothing but uh, the line which connects uh, from the evaporator to the compressor suction line and uh, liquid line is nothing but the line which goes out uh, from the uh, condenser to the evaporator is a liquid line. So these are the two kind of a lines so normally it has been covered. So now let's move on to the next slide. 